and welcome to the fourth episode of Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This series will follow our Tiny Nest project from the early stages all the way through to completion and beyond. This episode is about our building plan using SketchUp. So let's just dive right into it. Alright, there's a lot to go through here, but before jumping into it, I just want to mention that although I'm an electrician and I've had other professional guidance on getting this far in the planning, it's still subject to change and we greatly appreciate any feedback you might have uh, regarding anything that you see here. So I'm just going to go backwards through the model here, uh, stripping away each layer, and then walk forward through it step by step and uh, go through uh, the details of how, on how we plan to uh, put everything together. So obviously you start with a trailer which looks like this and uh, the first layer that's going down is a is aluminum flashing uh, on the bottom there and then the floor joists will be two by sixes and we may construct this possibly in more than one piece outside of the trailer we'll maybe put the flashing onto the wood and then drop it into place uh, it just depends on you know what it what it looks like when we actually start building how it's going to work best. Um, we're going to fill it with Roxol insulation, uh, which is a bat type insulation. And then uh, because two by sixes are five and a half inches and the depth of the trailer space inside is five inches, we've got this uh, lip here of a half inch. So we're going to shim it up with some half inch plywood. And I just want to note at this point that anywhere where wood comes in contact with metal we're going to actually prevent that contact by laying down a layer of sill gasket so in between uh, that plywood and this surface of the uh, the trailer there will be a thermal break there so that no contact is directly made at this point we'll be laying down a vapor barrier so there'll be plastic uh, poly sheeting down over the entire surface that you see here with uh, excess around the perimeter uh, and then we'll lay down a three quarter inch tongue and groove subfloor. And then the excess uh, vapor barrier will be wrapped back over top of the perimeter and wedged underneath the bottom plate so that it's then on the inside. And then that can then mate with the vapor barrier uh, that goes on the walls and subsequently the ceiling to make a complete unbroken seal. Moving on to some framing, I'll put in the back wall. And there's a few things, you'll see how they fit together as I go along, but these studs actually support the loft joists. And uh, all of the headers are two by sixes. And uh, this is another example of where some sill gasket will create a thermal break between the metal of the fender and this uh, header. Uh, and uh, I also try to put windows in between regularly spaced studs just to avoid uh, modifications and additional lumber being needed. So I'll throw in the sidewalls here. Now because we've got a single slope uh, shed type roof, um, it makes it a bit tricky but I, I'd still want to overlap the corners of the top plates. So that's kind of what I've got going on here that this little piece is just to fill in the space. But I would like to fasten it together the same way that, uh, for example, you can see the bottom plate is uh, overlapped. And that's just to give it more uh, a stronger connection so that the walls are, are better connected to each other. Uh, now moving on to the loft so you can see how those s sit on top of each of those um, studs that I pointed out a moment ago. And we have a little shower room and the inside rooms are framed with two by twos to avoid wasting space with uh, wall cavities and uh, this also sort of shows how we're gonna have to frame around the fenders because they protrude into the space a little bit. The toilet room is the same idea as the shower room and uh, at this point I'll show you how the furniture fits in so you can see what this is all about. Uh, the toilet room is a bit bigger because we managed to fit in a small IKEA sink and then this uh, is a composting toilet. This is just a placeholder model and then the shower room is going to be like a horse trough uh, kind of basin with a curtain that wraps all the way around and part of the reason we chose that is the way that the fender protrudes into the space prohibited um, a regular you know rectangular shower uh, stall to fit into that space so uh, that's our solution for that. And um, if you watch our design video, we talk about more how we reach this layout. Uh, so I won't go over that now. 
Another small detail about the framing is just making sure you have backing to fix the internal siding. So uh, for example here, we're not going to have a ceiling on the lower side of these loft joists. Uh, it'll be open, so when you get up into this space, if I just uh, add in the loft planks, there'll be nowhere to affix uh, siding to. So I've added backing in uh, everywhere that uh, there was any missing uh, lumber to, to nail into for the siding. Moving ahead with the framing, here's the front wall, so you can see the rest of the windows and the door. So the toilet and the shower room each get a slider window up high. The living room has one fixed window, which is this little one here, uh, and then two corner windows, same thing on the loft, and same thing on the kitchen, and those all open. There's a, a mix of awning and casement windows there. One important design element is the Simpson Strong Ties here, which are essentially a heavy-duty tie-down. And if you watch the trailer video, you'd see the flanges on the sides, which are a bit hard to show here, just the way that the model is. But they're meant to be drilled through. So once the framing's in place, we drill right through the bottom plate, through our subfloor, and through the trailer itself, and pass hardware through to affix these tie-downs. And then they get affixed to the stud. Uh, and then we've got the same thing going on on the top plate on the same stud, <clears throat> just for added connection, so that basically the metal of the trailer is connected to the framing, is connected to the top plate, and then is connected to the roof by means of hurricane clips on all of the rafters. So this is really important for uh, the strength of the building if it's being towed, especially you know if you're going down the highway with this thing. Uh, you want to be sure that it can withstand hurricane force winds and nothing's going to separate if it's you know rocking or hitting bumps on the road. Um, you want to be certain that uh, everything is connected uh, as strong as it can be. One of the areas that I had to do research on was how to vent the ceiling. Most attics are built in such a way to allow air to pass through to vent out any moisture and uh, prevent condensation problems. But because this is what would be considered a cathedral ceiling, another solution is needed. And I think I've come up with one, uh, and I'll try to go through how I've done it here. I plan on adding 3 quarter inch furring strips to the underside of each rafter to drop the inside ceiling by 3 quarters of an inch. This will also drop where the insulation sits, producing a 3 quarter inch gap between the top of the insulation and the roof sheathing shown here. So air can pass right through this whole gap. You can see the tree through this gap here uh, and pass out the other end. To get air into this space in the first place, I'll take away the roof sheathing, the sub fascia board, which is right tight to the front side of the wall framing, will be notched uh, the same 3 quarter inch to allow the gap to be maintained. And then because I have to stand off the final fascia board anyway because of the siding, uh, I've decided to put little furring strips to stand it off only uh, where the uh, rafters are to maintain that same gap. So if I show you where the fascia board fits on, you can see how air will be able to get up into the space and then flow along the top of the uh, insulation underneath the, the roof sheathing and then I can vent down uh, through the same same gap on the top side. And I'm hoping that this uh, venting method is going to be adequate. Like I said, regarding the vapor barrier, the ceiling will be vapor barrier, so there shouldn't be a problem of moisture entering the space uh, to begin with. But just as a safe measure, I wanted to add uh, an ability for the vapor to, uh, to pass out of this space should it ever enter it. To finish off, I'll show you the wall sheathing uh, and the roof and everything. So I'll just take off that fascia board because that comes on later. So the wall sheathing will just be half inch uh, regular plywood uh, with the uh, eighth inch gap for expansion uh, allowed for there. Uh, full sheets on the top and bottom and then uh, the remainder filled with uh, rip down strips. Uh, pretty much the same thing all the way around. Uh, just add back on the roof sheathing there and then we're gonna use house wrap obviously on there and one of the things that I wanted to do is so on the same sort of uh, concept as the uh, the roof venting is the siding venting 
which is referred to as a rain screen. And uh, normally you can use pressure treated um, wood strips, but I found a product that is a plastic uh, vented furring strip. So it's not shown here, but it allows air to pass side to side as well. So for spots, for example, like above the door, uh, if air can't get into that space from below, which it won't because of the door jam, uh, that space would be completely closed off and there would be no venting. But uh, when it's vented side to side, the air can pass uh, anywhere uh, and uh, you know go where it needs to go to help the drying and, and prevent uh, the buildup of any moisture. Uh, we're planning on using pine uh, siding and uh, staining it. Um, this is a bit extreme, kind of red, but uh, we're going to do some kind of reddish uh, stain treatment to it. And uh, just now going over the roofing, uh, put the fascia board back on. Uh, you put your drip edge down first, uh, roof paper over top, uh, the main portion of the roof, which will be uh, a, a um, sort of click together, fastened down um, metal roof. And then uh, there's gabled flashings. These are not perfect. They're just sort of placeholders. And then the, uh, the ridge cap on top. And then I've got the door in here, which we have actually ordered already. Uh, it's going to look something like that. And then uh, I had started putting in a little bit of trim, but that brings us right back to where we started. Making an incredibly detailed model like this has been absolutely invaluable in preparation. From identifying areas that uh, were unclear to me, to picking materials uh, for our first uh, material list, uh, it's just been an incredibly useful tool and I would recommend uh, to anyone if you're if you're planning on designing something yourself to to take the time learn SketchUp and do this I've spent countless hours on it but everyone has been worth it to uh, to feel prepared and feel like I understand everything that being said if I've gone through something here and you've noticed something just outrageous or or just have a tip on any one of the elements or any kind of feedback would be incredibly uh, appreciated as that's another reason we're going through this is to uh, be able to present it to people and, and ask for feedback and uh, make any changes that we need to to make sure that we're, we're building the best thing that we can. I'd like to finish on the model with a question to you guys uh, regarding structural strapping if anyone has some feedback on the subject. The tumbleweed plans call for a metal strap to basically hug the entire building and I've been thinking about doing something similar uh, at the height of the window headers uh, and uh, loft joists wrapping all the way around. But I've seen other people put straps uh, on this, the far end walls uh, in an X configuration. And uh, I am interested in, in adding just that extra bit of structural integrity on top of the Simpson tr strong ties that we already have. But if anyone has any input on the best way to achieve that, uh, it would be really appreciated. Another thing I want to mention is that if we get the vapor barrier sealed up tight, it'll mean that we're essentially inside a plastic bag. So I'm looking into an active venting unit to exchange inside air with outside air to keep it fresh. And we'll also have a quality CO2 and smoke detector installed. The SketchUp file is available for download in the description and please leave any suggestions you might have in the comments below. And we'll see you in the next episode.